healthy to, to look around because contemporary art, our culture of contemporary art, not modern, but contemporary art is much more about, um, you know, internet, the international field. So mm -hmm. I think now we have to bring contemporary art to the local scene, yes. which is really interesting. Uh, even if it's, uh, if, if it's something that it was a little bit pushed by history, but I think we are going to, we have to look around and be more grounded in our, in our, in our own field, because Argentina is the south of the south, because Argentina has a very strong psychoanalytic tradition. So I was putting together an exhibition about the relationship between psychoanalysis and art in Argentina. But it was an Argentine project and it was about modernity in Argentina, how we cut and how we understand and chop modernity here. So it was a very local show and people were surprised. You know, friends of mine who are very cosmopolitan artists, international working with psychiatric institutions. And, and I said, no, this is an Argentine project. This is not a project for, for another kind of artist because I want to talk about the local. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's very happy. It's happy news. concerned about what's going on with the with the network that we have partnerships and how uh, will the new protocols for traveling exhibitions bringing people will be mm -hmm. because that's a different issue but at the same time we're talking here through zoom so I think we have to cope with these two situations and I want to talk to you about that I agree I mean one of the things that I always try you know to do when I uh, decide the program of the power plant is always this notion of the local, the national and the international and to have them working together. The audience for me is not a compact thing. It's, it's, a, it's a cluster of communities that you form and they have to be nurtured through mm -hmm. programs. I have seen the museum, long lines waiting to get into the museum for exhibitions that the museum put together before my tenure. And I, but, I, but, I, but I also have seen exhibitions empty, exhibitions that are fantastic. So I think the audience is a very complex um, forming, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a volcanic matter, you know? It, 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 it depends how, how the heat of the material comes to you. I mean, the lava is mm -hmm. different. Uh, I think that community is something that art, contemporary art, resents. I mean, contemporary art forms a community that is very international, we know that. But also the local has many other communities that mm -hmm. are nurtured and international. So I think, how is your, because I have seen the power plant, when I've, I've seen the power plant three times, I, I visited the power plant, and it's always, um, there is a lot, a lot of people coming to your programs. I mean, it's a beautiful space, and you have a, a fantastic program. But how is your audience? How do you, how do you work with the audience? Well, so we have. I, I. Okay. So the thing that I love about Toronto is, fifty percent of people who live in Toronto were not born in Canada. Ah, there's like New York. There's four daily. Uh, newspapers written in Mandarin or Cantonese, I can't remember which one, one of the languages. Um, there are countless of Portuguese, there's like all these communities that are all mixed together and then all these different diaspora and as time goes by there's more and more of these new immigrants, new Torontonians in the city. So for me this is everything I love about the world because I feel, and this is always my goal, that like the power plant is like the world in one place. And, uh, and, you, and you see in the museum, which is a private museum, you see people from the, from the fringes of the social spectrum together. And this togetherness is what drives me to be, you know, a museum director. Because mm -hmm. I see people from very poor areas of the cono urbano, which is the suburbia of Buenos Aires, the greatest Buenos Aires. And you see there, you know, for them it's, a, it's an effort to be there, but they're there mm -hmm. and they're absorbing everything. 
And then you see someone from the very elegant neighborhood where, where the museum is planted and, and you see them together, interacting in the same space. And that's what I love of, the, of this society, that you see lines of people, you know, to go to a cinema, lines of people to go to a theater. You have books everywhere. This is a, this is a very cultural uh, city. I don't know what's going to happen after the COVID, but I, I'm sure that we will, we will come together again. Knowledge is not is not one thing that we can create that we can create a, a special kind of knowledge that it's very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that space of affection when you have such an attrition right now is very important. Yeah, I mean, I the the power plant. I mean, luckily for us, um, it's in, and it's been inscribed in its DNA at least for the last eight years. The power plant is free, you know, because. I know we get somebody to to sponsor us to give us money and to me that's like something that i hold so dear and now it's really whenever i'm asking people to support because to support the, the all of because money is important to do what we do but i feel like it's like through your support, you're helping me to break all barriers so that everybody can come to the power plant to see the work of the artist, removing that financial barrier, which is there because things cost in life and we can't function. A museum cannot function without any money. Um, no. And one of the things that, that this, um, I would say this, this specific situation of COVID has shown us is whether governments are interested in supporting institutions such as museum so that when you no longer have that ticket that is being paid, can we function, you know? Is it an essential service to society to have a museum, to have an art gallery, to be a place that also feeds the, I mean, you need a healthy mind and a healthy body, but, you know, if there's nothing food for thought, you die inside no matter what, you know? So to me, um, the, this, this is something that I'm happy about uh, and we strive to, to be able to offer so much program for free in order to remove those barriers. And I think that um, the, this period is definitely showing us that we're relentless and that we all work very hard. But at the end of the day, it's like, not that there's a, a true or a false experience of art, but for me, as you said, the experience of art is leaving your home, walking, driving, taking the bus, getting to the museum, meeting the person at the ticket, seeing the guards, and then being in front of the artwork and then the people that are also having this experience. I mean, I have countless histories of, of being, um, being in the muse a museum and having somebody ask you a question, somebody you don't know, and then starting to engage in a conversation with a perfect stranger. And suddenly this conversation brings you to another place. And then you feel like, wow, I'm happy that I got up this morning and that I was able through the work of the artist that is in front of me and to have this conversation. And I keep telling people that this notion of aha moment in front of, you know, in front of an artwork, when, when Breton says, you know, la beauté sera convulsive ou ne sera pas. Yeah. Once you've had that moment, all you do is run after more of these moments. And myself as a director, because I'm a very selfish director, I <laughs> to share with people these aha moments that I've had in front of a work of art. And then I want to share it with other people, hoping that they will have their own very individual moment in front of that work, right? And so I become the bridge between those two. But I hate to say it to people, you've got to do the work and you have to get out of your house and be in front of the work of art, the physical visual art. There's other forms, but there's a difference in watching a movie on your laptop and watching a movie in a cinema. Totally different. Different, you know? 
but also, but also, I think there is a phenomenon that uh, sparked my my interest, which is how people are uh, recomposing art in their in their domestic environments. Do you see how they represent, reenact pieces of art? You know, very very famous uh, paintings and sculptures. So uh, this means that people really have a very close bodily connection to art. I mean, it's not something that you see in a, in, a, in a vitrine or in a pedestal. People are really close to art nowadays. Katami has mentioned many, many artworks and artists who uh, are dealing with very thorny issues of, the, of, of today's, uh, you know, history and politics. I think, I think contemporary art has to, on my view, on my modest view, it has two perspectives that are very critical. One is ethnographic and the other one is, uh, it's, about, it's about modernity and how modernity uh, changed the lives of, you know, many, many people uh, with aspirational uh, goals. So I think uh, the, the two sometimes come together and sometimes they don't. But that's what you see in biennials, for instance. When you go to a biennial, the biennial expands the limits of our history. If we stick to our history, we'll be very conservative nowadays. But if we, if we trust artists and we go to biennials where they test you know, what the artists are thinking, that's the, the thinking of today, which yeah. is not journalistic, it's a different kind of thinking. Yeah. You see how you know, someone from Tanzania is thinking in, col in colonialism in different terms than Michel Léry did at the beginning of the century in Paris. So I think uh, that's the beauty of contemporary art and that's what my connection to it. Mm -hmm.